Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited about today's video. As you've seen or if you know on my channel, I do a few type of reading vlogs where things kind of choose the books that I'm reading for the month, whether it's all of a sudden I'm blanking on every single one I've ever done. For today's video, I actually remember someone recommending doing this in some kind of way. I didn't really know how I wanted to do it until right now. So if that was you who recommended this video idea, thank you so much, shout out to you. I loved this idea, I've had it written down for a while now, but again, I didn't know how exactly I wanted to do it. I've come up with the way I think we're gonna do it for today's video. So from the title, emojis are going to be picking the books that I'm reading for this week. If you haven't seen my TBR video for this month, definitely go check it out before watching this because I posted Instagram stories and had you guys blindly choose the books to put on my TBR are for this month but with emojis so the emojis that are on top of the books that correlate to those books are the emojis that are going to help pick the books that we read for this month so if you haven't seen that tbr video definitely check that out to kind of refresh the books that are on my tbr and also the emojis that went with it either way though i'm going to now show you the books that are on my tbr anyway i'm going to read three books in this video the first two we're going to have emojis be randomly chosen from the books that are already correlated to the ones on my tbr but for the last book we're going to read i'm going to let some type of randomizer generator pick through every single emoji on on the emoji keyboard and I'm gonna try to find a book on my TBR that correlates to that emoji just to make it a little more fun a little bit more of like a scavenger of which book correlates to that emoji since I had emojis already with the books on my TBR we're gonna be using those specifically to help get through our physical TBR just a little refresher for the books that are on my April TBR they are all here and also in my TBR video of course we have a few romances we have a few fantasies we have a few mystery thrillers we have a good range on this TBR for honestly any mood I'm in okay here we go Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> Why am I so nervous? Okay, three, two, one. Okay, you guys can see hers. I'm not gonna look. Which one won? <sighs> Shut up. That's the one I wanted to. <laughs> How did it know me so well? Oh my God, I'm so excited. As you can see, our winner is the number five, which goes to Five Broken Blades by my Coraline. This one I actually got the arc of and it comes out May 7th. So it comes out next month. We'll see how this goes. I am so excited. This is a fantasy kind of like almost feels like a competition, but there's five of the most dangerous liars in the land have been mysteriously summoned to work together for a single objective kill the king. It says, now each of the five blades will come for him. Each has tasted bitterness from the hired hitman seeking atonement, a lovely assassin who seeks freedom, or even the prince banished for his cruel crimes. None can resist the sweet icy lure of vengeance. To survive, they'll have to find a way to trust each other, but only one can take the crown. Let the best liar win. I got this book and I read the summary and then I read the Goodreads summary and I was like, I need to put this on like my immediate TBR. It sounded just so interesting, such high stakes, but like feel like it's gonna be really entertaining. As you can see, I'm really excited. I have really high hopes for this one and I'm so happy it got chosen first. So with that being said, I'm gonna go start this book. I'll give updates of course and I'm just, I'm so excited about this one. I just hit page hit. I don't think I ever said that. I just got to page 79. I didn't read too much last night. Okay, first impressions. I think why I was so excited about this book is because I realized it's kind of giving, or the summary was kind of giving Six of Crows, where in that book, it's a group of people that don't know each other and are kind of like thieves, not all thieves, but they all have different things about themselves and they all get together in like a group and go on like a heist together. So the summary of this was kind of giving the same thing where these five, characters all have a mission not a heist but like a murder mission you know so i kind of gave the same energy and i was so excited because i love six of crows that's one of my favorite duologies ever so i'm trying not to compare the two but i feel like this is not giving six of crows in the way that i thought it would we're still getting the main characters and like about them and what they're about and like when they're getting told the mission they have to go on so we're still very early on in the book i'm very excited to see where it's gonna go though and see once we get further in how it's all gonna happen and unravel i feel like the writing style is a little i don't know the word for it because the sentences like they're really short sentences or I feel like most of them are really short and I feel like being in each character you get different point of views in each chapter or you get each character's point of view when you're on that chapter and in their first person point of view so I feel like the writing style I need to find the word I'm thinking of like the, the sentences are really short it's not very like descriptive or not surface level but it's really just like showing you what's the word I 
like they're kind of just telling you what's happening very like simplistic got it that's the word it's very simple like i feel like it's not going into too much detail or giving like too much it's just like this is what's happening so i will say i like the way the story like set up and was going with each point of view seeing what each character is about they're all so different in different parts of the world and different parts of their lives and all of that is very interesting so i'm very interested to see where it's gonna go and all of that again i'm still pretty early on into this book so i feel like so much is probably gonna happen it is an easy read and easy also to understand and like grasp the concepts and grasp everything that's going on like it's not confusing the fantasy world's not too confusing very easy to read which is very nice too so yeah that's all right now i'm gonna go keep reading today and i'll give you guys some updates this point of view we're in well these two characters we get both of their point of views in different chapters but them specifically are my favorite so far their dynamics are completely opposite like she's just funny and like upbeat and i don't say happy but she is happy but like you know she's more upbeat and then he is very like <laughs> they're opposites and their dynamic together is really funny and i really like it and i'm like maybe there's a little romance that's gonna come from this i don't know that's just me being a hopeless romantic thinking any little thing could be a romance but if it is i might be eating it up because so far again their dynamic is just too good up now i think we need to just like each character and like what they're about and stuff and giving at least a little bit of background but like now i feel like we're like picking up i'm excited now i'm almost at 100 pages so i'm really excited now i feel like it's gonna get it's gonna get more suddenly i don't know words today i'm just gonna stop talking until i can come up with descriptive words until i can talk and figure out adjectives that's all for me today until i can learn how to speak <laughs> this sweatshirt on probably the last three of my videos at least or at least reading vlogs it's been my comfort sweatshirt for sure but i told myself i wasn't allowed to speak again in this video until i had clear wording clear thoughts and full sentences because i just for some reason when i start recording or like when i start speaking sometimes i'll start talking before i like figure out the thoughts i have on the book do you know what i mean like i speak before i think about what i want to say and then words don't come out i forget what adjectives are and Anyway, I wrote down my thoughts this time. I've gotten, I think I'm almost 200 pages in now. So what's interesting is I thought that it was going to be all of these point of views and all of these killers or whatever they are, all these liars and yeah, five of the most dangerous liars in the land. I thought all of them were going to be like in the same scenes, all of their storylines are like intertwined and like they're all together doing this almost and maybe eventually it'll happen but like we're almost halfway and like these main characters haven't really met yet but i feel like what's been going on has been taking up so much of the storyline that i'm like okay let's like get to the main plot i feel like we're not really in like the main what i've been waiting for so i'm still waiting for that not to take away that the plot is bad or what's going on is bad i just feel like it's a lot of build up to what i think is gonna happen or like where i think the story is gonna go i also feel like the writing style i feel like it's more kind of telling rather than showing rather than giving descriptions or like maybe just some more descriptive words like i feel like the sentences are so short and like i picked up a sword i did this he did that like it's just kind of like telling you what's going on rather than giving like these like really descriptive like really putting you in the scene i feel like i'm kind of just like reading what's going on whereas i'm like not connecting and i guess i'm like not fully connected to the characters but like it's interesting because when that happens sometimes i'll still really enjoy the writing style but with this it's kind of like i'm disconnected from both but i'm still intrigued enough and really curious enough to want to continue like i don't want to dnf it like i want to see what's gonna happen where the story's gonna go because i'm like think that the summary and like the plot and like 
the summary on the back of the book is really interesting and I'm still interested to know. That plus there's short chapters which is keeping me going and making me read it a little bit faster. It's not to say I'm not enjoying it. I just feel like maybe my expectations for what was going to happen are different and again I'm still curious. I'm still in it enough to want to keep going. Like I don't want to like not finish the book. I thought about it a hundred pages ago. I was like, is this, am I gonna enjoy this? But those are just like my more coherent, not coherent. Here we go. Not knowing what word to use. I said this last time I talked in the last clip I was talking that it was gonna pick up. Like I feel like where we were, it was gonna pick up. And I feel like it still is like getting that build up to where I want to be, which is what I'm excited for. So I'm still excited to keep going. I just feel like it's slow getting there. I don't know. I'll give more updates with full thoughts, full formed thoughts. See you probably tomorrow. <laughs> One of the parts I was waiting for just happened. Literally just ra And it was done well. I spoke too soon. I only read maybe like 10 pages since I last talked. Now I'm excited. Now we're gonna pick up. What are we gonna do if I end up DNFing this? That is so sad because you just, the excitement on my face picking this for my TBR and you guys picking it for my TBR and you know what? I might have to DNF it. Not, I don't, it's so interesting. I wish I could like read you examples from the book for what I'm trying to like explain about how this is like written, but I just can't since it's an arc. So the summary was just so promising. Like I was so excited for like another kind of almost six of crows heist thing going on. And we definitely got to like the point of the book where I feel like I was most excited for and like wanted to see how that was going to go down. But it's the writing style that I just can't connect with. It's like so, I keep saying the word simplistic and so simple, but it truly is. It's like I pick up this i opened this and this is what where this was it's just so like surface level of what's happening there's no like depth to the characters and depth to anything and it says on the back like these are like five liars getting together and going on the same mission and stuff which you do have them all being like liars but it's weirdly contradicting because they also easily trust other people like trust one another even and you know it's just such an interesting no, it's written very interestingly. I might just skim. I have like a little over 200 pages left, maybe a little under 200. So I've read to page 285 now. So I think I have a little under 200 pages left. I might just skim just to see how this ends. I just don't think I want to like full on like read this and I may end up still writing this. I don't have to think about it. It's definitely gonna be a DNF, but like since I got so far in, I might just see like what kind of happens at the end. I'm like debating if I should write it or if I should just leave it off. It's like a DNF. Cause I read like a good amount. Like I read this much of the book so far and I've I feel like that's I have like a formed opinion I feel like I've read enough of the book but I don't know I'm gonna skim well I guess now I can just like look oh that escalated quickly oh wow wait no way Okay. I knew the ending was gonna be like a lot, not a lot, but like crazy and like a lot was gonna happen. I just feel like getting there was a lot. So am I glad I didn't read the last 200-ish pages, little under 200 pages? Kind of. I kind of felt like I was wasting my time almost with like how much I wasn't enjoying physically reading it, but I was enjoying the storyline. It was such a weird mix, but you know, the ending was from what I read when I skimmed was not what I expected. So it's weird because I have like I've never felt like this weirdly conflicted with a book. The actual story, like I feel like it had so much potential that to be like really, really good. So I don't know, I'm really conflicted on this. Yeah, just skim the last of the book and we're now gonna choose the next one because I need to just get into another book. I feel like I've been reading this for so long and like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this book. At the end of this video, we'll decide what happens with this one, but let me get my TBR for the month and get the emoji spinner thing and we will pick our next read, which I'm really excited about. I need a new book. I need to start reading something else. I honestly would be happy with any of these being chosen. I feel like I'm not sure what kind of mood I'm in. Not too much of like a fantasy, but the fantasy I just read, like a high stake one. I think that's what kept me going is like there were such high stakes still happening that I was just like so curious to find out what was gonna happen. But I'm done talking about that book now. Are we ready? Let's spin it. I don't wanna look yet. You guys can see first. Okay, what was it? I don't wanna look. <laughs> Why am I nervous? Okay. 
<gasps> oh okay we're going to be reading before i let go by kennedy ryan next the engagement ring has been chosen it's about two people that were married they got divorced but they have to co-parent and they're always like drawn back to each other it's kind of what i got from the back of it but i heard this was like kind of like more of a deeper romance i'm really excited to read a kennedy ryan book i've heard like nothing but amazing things we're gonna start this today i'm very excited to just start a new book i feel like i need to just start fresh now but there's nothing like starting a book listening to Lana Del Rey especially a romance book I couldn't find a playlist for this book but when I searched it on Spotify to look up if there was a music playlist the audiobook is on there so once I get my hour oh no I think I'm still in Spotify jail well if you wanted to listen to it on Spotify it's on there and since I didn't find a playlist I just looked up second chance because I think this is going to be the kind of like a second chance story so I found a little playlist titled second chance romance and seriously there is nothing like Lana Del Rey in my headphones starting a new book wanting to annotate something on the first page like there is nothing truly like that so don't want to speak too soon but so far no complaints here my phone so i have my update on my kindle app i just got to chapter 16 i'm 40 percent of the way through according to my kindle app but in the book i don't know where that is i'm on page almost 150 in the book i'm almost halfway i read a bunch last night and i have a little bit of thoughts to give not too many honestly i'm really enjoying this story i feel like it's different than like just a romance novel i feel like picking this up reading the back you're like assuming it'll feel more romancy but i feel like this book is kind of just like a realistic depiction of a couple that was married and like the divorce and the grief process and things that happen also like co-parenting as divorced parents and having kids to take care of a life and like all these responsibilities but also figuring out each other and all this stuff and like life after divorce and stuff that you go through together and i feel like it's such a realistic depiction of that or it just feels like one and i'm really enjoying the way that the story is told i feel like knowing it was going to be about two people that were married had a divorce have kids and stuff in my head like i picture the pacing and like the storyline layout being kind of like maybe like a past and present you know this is how they met this is when they got married this is what happened and giving like that kind of timeline but this the way it's told it's like right when it starts it's their their divorce their years into their divorce and you're kind of like slowly getting to know what happened in the past and kind of how that affected where they stand right now but i'm really enjoying the way the story is set up and being told and i also again really enjoy that it just feels kind of like a realistic storyline and like this could happen i just had a really weird deja vu that was really weird. I feel like I was just, like I've looked at this book, looked at the camera, like this was, like I've done this before and said this already. That was so weird. I haven't had a deja vu in so long. Anyway, forgot what I was saying. That's all. I'm enjoying it. I just had really weird deja vu. Now I need to go somewhere else and read somewhere else and not stand right here talking about this book because I feel like... I have already done this, but I haven't. I'm enjoying the way it's told again. I just feel like it's not one you can kind of predict what's going to happen. Like it's not the structure of a normal romance. So I'm very intrigued to see where this story goes and what happens. So I'll be back with further updates when I get further in.
Direction song comes on any type of playlist, I can't focus on my book. But I need to listen to it, so we're taking a pause. There is nothing like One Direction. And I knew that. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna have to skip this song because I do want to read. Before I let go by Kennedy Ryan this morning, I had like maybe like 20% of this book left. I read a bunch last night. I couldn't stop reading. I feel like it got really, really good at the part that I was at last night. Not that it wasn't good like the whole time, but it, like it was getting like emotional. Like I started crying last night. At the end of this book, I started tearing up. Like I really had a great time reading this. So I wrote down a few things because I didn't want to forget how I was feeling last night about what I liked about this book and like what I was feeling about it. So I said I felt like I'm getting an inside look or kind of like a front row seat into a real couple's. Wait. I misspelled something. Well, I know what I was trying to say. I felt like I was getting like an inside look and like just a glimpse and little slice of a couple post-divorce and how everything leading up has affected them. Like going through such a hard, dark time of what happened and why they got divorced and like seeing that and going through something so difficult and having to go through that and like how to get through that as a woman, as a mother, as a father, as a couple, having their children and co-parenting together and working together, but also figuring it out on your own, like going through something so difficult. Again, like how it affects and how you go through it just as a different role in like a family or a relationship and stuff how it affects the kids how it affects you as parents you as individuals like I feel like it really gave an inside look and a realistic look into that because I feel like that's like a situation that happens in real life and I love when books depict like real life things that happen in such like a real raw way and I feel like this book really did that especially going through something like grief or something really hard everyone deals with it differently and it's hard to recognize that when like you're in the thick of it so I really really love the way this book depicted that and showed that through these two characters as parents as a couple you know showing the struggles with their kids and also having a friendship and people to rely on that's not each other and it's just like I really liked the way that this book was told also like I said before how it was kind of set up like you're not just getting a then and now and like seeing what happened and then how it affected them now like you're kind of just getting it felt like a glimpse into someone's life and like the spot that the book started like it just felt like I was getting a real life view into a real life couple that was got divorced for a specific reason and a, a hard difficult thing that they went through I really loved the writing style of this I really love the storyline of this. I think this was such a great read. I had such a good time reading it. It made me feel so much. I was tearing up at the end of it. I don't know what I'm gonna rate this. I feel like I wanna give it a four in the four range. I don't know specifically. I feel like at the end of this video, I'll give a small little wrap up of my ratings for each book because I did think on Five Broken Blades a little bit more. So at the end of this video, I'll give like a full rating. I feel like I have to just sit on all of these. So I'm not gonna pick the next one just yet because I'm gonna read a different book, not for this video. So I'll be back when it's time to pick our last book. Okay, it is time to pick our next book. Like I said, we're gonna have random emoji generator which I just searched on Google. I clicked the first website so hopefully this works well. It's going to generate through every single emoji on the keyboard. Like I said, this last book, we're going to do it this way. And whatever emoji we get, I'm going to try to find a book that correlates with it. I'm going to click randomize in three, two, <gasps> okay. Is that a hockey stick? Okay, we got a hockey stick and a hockey puck. This is interesting. This means I can read a hockey book, a hockey romance. And I think there's one on my TBR. <gasps> Why was that kind of perfect? Why did this kind of just pick a book from my physical TBR? It's like it knew that I needed to get through my physical TBR this month. I'm gonna still look through my other books, see what other hockey books I have. I feel like I don't have many hockey romances on my TBR. Also none like on my radar that I wanna read. So the only one on my physical TBR that I have is The Grim Effect, which is a hockey romance between daughter of the main characters from The Deal from L. Kennedy's Off Campus. Honestly, no complaints here. I did want to read this. I'm kind of in a romance mood because I just read a mystery before this and well, not for this video, but like between this video, like before I'm starting this book, I read a mystery. Anyway, also the fact that it's on my, my actual TBR for the month, I think this is a, a win. I'm going to start this book. I'm very excited. I'll give some updates. We'll see how I feel. this 
book was about other than it's a hockey romance and that the main character is the daughter of Garrett Graham from the first off-campus book. That's like all I really knew about it before going into it and I finally read the summary of it while reading like the prologue in the first chapter. I was like wait what is this like what is the actual summary of this book and basically Gigi the main character the daughter of Garrett Graham. Garrett is obviously this huge NFL like huge name in the NFL world and Gigi kind of lives in his shadow almost and she's a hockey player and then she meets our other main character Ryder six years ago which is the prologue while practicing before the hockey camp starts and he kind of like makes fun of her a little it's like get off of the ice right now like the camp is gonna start you're a figure skater prom queen all this like nicknames and stuff then he finds out that Gigi is Derek Graham's daughter and now we're six years in the future and where he's going to school and Briar which is like the main one that Garrett is a part of they're combining because we're riders from his school doesn't have enough funds for all of this so they're combining schools going over to Briar where now the athletic teams are combining but they were rivals so it's hard now because the Briar team and the team that writers from were like very competitive and angry at each other and had this animosity and I'm pretty sure he makes a bad impression with Garrett Graham or something like that what it says on the back and he has to have make a compromise with Gigi because she wants to be go on to the national team she wants to go to the Olympics or something like that so I think they make a compromise at some point in this but they have a little bit of an enemy situation going on a little bit of like animosity between them two because in the prologue they had this bad first encounter and first meeting of each other so that's kind of the summary of it that's what I'm getting from it I'm literally on page 23 so I don't know the full story but it's honestly a really long book for being a romance it's almost 500 pages which is i feel like a lot like you can see this is a thick book but good news it's on kindle unlimited so i did download it onto my kindle and i have read i think i read the prologue on my kindle but i'm just gonna switch back and forth i will give updates like i don't really have much to say now just that's what the book is about what i'm getting from the back of it hello guys i am now 47 percent of the way through this book i'm on chapter 24 and i was thinking this while i was reading it but l kennedy has written so many hockey romances at this point i don't know how many are in like the spinoff of the off-campus series but she has so many I feel like out of that at this point she's gotta know what she's doing you know what I mean like she's written and she's like been in this world for so long like at this point like it's gotta hit you know I don't think I was really into this until I got like a hundred ish pages and there was like one specific scene that was like oh like okay it kind of like reeled me in it kind of like caught my attention and now I'm like invested in it there's something about like a new adult romance like college romance that's not like nostalgic to me because that's like weird to say I was in college a few years ago but like I feel like I read a lot of more of adult romances or like romantices and like fantasies that like coming back to like a college romance like a hockey sports romance or something about it that like I really love another thing is like this one the two main characters are both in the hockey field where usually it's like the guys like this athlete and then you have the girl who's just like in college or whatever but they're both in the same sports so, like there's a lot more hockey talk I feel like in this one but it was funny because last night I think it was like they were practicing or there was like a few hockey terminology and I was thinking about it's like I know nothing about hockey the author could be writing like something completely like not correct like in hockey terminology I would have no idea and I just thought that was really funny like I don't I read it I, I like try to picture it but like some of the stuff that's going on hockey world I don't really understand but I feel like she's doing a good job like balancing the two main characters having hockey be like a huge part of their life but also having them like be different individuals and like them together if that makes sense. I also like with this whole hockey aspect where it's focusing on that where they have different goals in the hockey world and they're kind of helping each other out but it kind of feels different than normal hockey romances or other ones that I've read where it's like the athlete is just like cocky player like just wants to like hook up. I mean I feel like it usually just is on the athlete side in these hockey romances but in this one it's like both of them are kind of like on the same page here if that makes any sense. I don't know if that makes any sense. I feel like it's not following the typical storyline of like grumpy athlete hockey player. I feel like there's more to these two in, in the hockey world and also like together and I think I also like the new adult like college scene because there's nothing like a found family and like a sports romance or like this genre I feel like the friend groups and the side characters really make some of these books like the other hockey players have like different personalities and like her friends and stuff and when they all like mix together I feel like it's really fun and like really funny to see like everyone's banter together this one like I was trying to get to or like trying to say before like the physical attraction is definitely like one of the main things in this but what I appreciated is it wasn't too like insta lovey like we got the storyline and then we're now like moving on to this part of the book it took me a little bit to understand who's who like there's a lot of different players and characters I don't know if that stems from other books in the series because I only read the four main off-campus books I didn't read epilogue book I think there's one about all four of them and then there's also the Briar U and everything I didn't read any of those ones just the main four which they come in here like obviously her father Garrett Graham and her mom come in here but the other like main ones from off-campus like Dean and Logan and whatever like they come in and she calls them her uncles and I'm like 
Okay, so now I'm attracted to the, your uncles. Like, I love your uncles. Because from what I remember reading off campus, like, years ago, I just, like, I, I enjoyed them. They're, like, one of my first, I think, hockey or, like, sports romances. I think it was my first sports romance series, at least. And I, like, remember just, like, reading them so quickly. But seeing them come in here, and it's, like, years later, they're now, like, uncle status. Interesting to see, because, again, I've never read where I've read a series. And, like, I'm now reading about the children of it. So that part's very interesting. I'm really enjoying it. There was, like, 100-ish pages where I was kind of like eh, iffy about it. Like, I don't know if I was in the mood for it, but then, like I said, that one scene got me. So I'm gonna read more tonight. Again, I'm 47% in, so we'll see how far I can get. But so far, so good. I'm very much enjoying it. really cute like I feel like we're like further into the relationship now like I have a little over 100 pages left I'm almost 70% of the way through and I just I like them together not that I suspected that I wouldn't but I just didn't think I would like them as much as I do I guess I don't really expect to like this book as much as I am I feel like I'm taking my time with this one too which I really like so it's going great just finished the gram effect finally i actually like i said earlier really quickly i took my time with this book and i read it in like four days i kind of slowly read it not because i wasn't into it but i would just pick it up when i was in the mood for it i feel like i was kind of really mood reading this book whereas other books or like usually when i'm reading i try to get through it not like force myself to get through it quicker but like i like to try to read it a little bit faster so that i can get to my next book i get just really excited but this one i just really thoroughly enjoyed my time reading it i enjoyed the storyline like this one pleasantly surprised me like i said i read off campus i think it was 2021 or the end of 2021 so it's been a while and i liked it in 2021 i just didn't know how it would feel going back into that world and i haven't read an l kennedy book since then so i was just a little skeptical i didn't know if i was gonna like it but to my surprise i don't know if it's because my expectations for myself liking it were so low i really enjoyed this book i ended up giving it four stars i was gonna be picky about it and give it in between the four stars but i feel like just a four star a solid four star because there's a few things that i didn't love but overall it was a really good read one thing about this book is it's with the epilogue around 500 pages which usually i'm like contemporary romance especially new adult college scene hockey romance shouldn't be that long but i feel like there was so much to it and i feel like she did a really good job of mixing relationships between friends and family also between obviously our two main characters in general the hockey scenes and the hockey stuff but also like the spice scenes that were in it because i feel like this was more spice heavy which i remember in off campus like there was a lot of spice and i don't know if that's because it was my first like hockey sports romance and i didn't really read spice like that i don't know but i feel like there was a good amount of spice in here but like to the story it like made sense if that makes any sense this story it didn't like drag on i feel like do you feel like in the beginning this is why i gave it four stars mainly the first like 20 percent was kind of slow like building up the story and learning about all these new characters there's a lot of side characters that i was confused like i said so it took a while for me to kind of get into it in that way but once i was into it like i was i was into it the 500 pages was justified because there was a lot to figure out within them as like a relationship but also with all these side characters and like other things going on with hockey stuff within their personal lives but also like together as people and a relationship and stuff so like i feel like the 500 pages was kind of needed otherwise i feel like it would have been like too rushed into everything i will say at the end also was a four star because i didn't love kind of what was going on at the end of it i do like the way that storyline went but like there was like one thing that happened at the end of it that i was like it just didn't really feel really realistic but like I don't know and like i said it does have a good amount of space and like i said it makes sense to the story which i feel like doesn't make sense in like a spoiler free way like without really knowing the context of it but for the relationship with the amount of spice in here and like what was going on between them she included just enough emotion and emotional investing into this yeah investing that i feel like it balanced out eventually like it definitely was like a slower burn getting into like the emotional things but i think they needed it and i feel like again the page count and what was like spread out and like all of that i feel like it's just 
you know, the pacing of it, I think is what I'm trying to say. It's, it made sense for how long this book was. I thought this was just going to be, honestly, just like a, a rom com -y, I guess, type of like hockey romance, lots of spice. But I feel like there was more depth to it. I feel like it got deeper in a lot of parts. Lots of parts surprised me that I didn't think we were going to go there. But I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like it took a while to kind of get backstory and history on our male main character, Ryder. But once you got it, everything just like kind of clicks. It makes sense. And like, I don't know, I really enjoyed both of our characters. Also, especially Gigi. I was nervous because being a child of like the main character from off campus and also being a hockey player like her father who was the main character off campus I was nervous it was gonna be kind of like copy paste like Garrett Graham's like prodigy like same personality and stuff but Gigi's like definitely just her own person like Garrett Graham doesn't like shine over the book in any way which I always get nervous I guess because I've never read a child book from a main character in a series so I didn't know if Garrett Graham was gonna be a very major prominent character in this book but he was in enough scenes and I feel like it was great the way that it was thrown in and I feel like Gigi was her own hockey player wanted her own things as an athlete and as a person and everything so I really enjoyed it yeah those are my thoughts on this book I'm really really happy that it was chosen for this video I feel like if it's not chosen for a video I wouldn't have like fully reached for this or picked it up like it wasn't like top of my radar like I've said before so I'm really happy that it was chosen so shout out to our random generator shout out to that before i go though i think i was going to give more thoughts on these other two books so this one was the dnf 60 percent in but i did skim the rest of it so i do not like the ending and i've never i feel like i use my dnf book i dnf it but this one i ended up saying on my goodreads that i read because i feel like i put enough of my time and i invested enough of my time into this book and i also know everything whatever i ended up saying that i did read it on my goodreads i think i would rate this between two and a half and three stars which is very contradicting for a dnf i feel like for a dnf you're gonna give two or lower if you're going to rate it but i think what i really felt I feel like more towards this book was I was enjoying the potential of what the book was going to be and like what I thought was going to be and I was like waiting for it to reach that potential of what I thought in my head was going to happen but again I did not connect to the writing style of this I feel like the story and the summary and its plot and everything the characters and I feel like there could have been more like depth and more like description and like getting more into it and more like deep and stuff that I feel like it had so much potential to be one of my favorite like fantasies like I really really enjoyed the story plot line of all of this I thought it was so interesting I think it just fell flat the way it was told so I think I would give it around that rating but I did say that I read this on my Goodreads and then we have before I let go I don't know if I set a rating for this I read this days ago since I started this book and I read another book between these two as well so I think I ended up giving this a four if I were to give it a little bit of a different rating I would give it like a 4.25 maybe I really enjoyed this I remember giving all my thoughts on it so I'm not gonna say too much but I liked how this was like a real depiction or it felt like a real depiction a raw story and I really really appreciated that and I really 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 like this book I want to read more of her stories and we all know what I just felt about this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. I feel like this was really fun. Again, I just like having things pick what books I'm reading because I am indecisive. Even though I'm a mood reader and have like a TBR and everything, I just, I'm really indecisive. I like when things or people or something is picking the books that I'm reading. So let me know if you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any other ideas of things I can pick my reads for a week. I feel like these are my favorite videos to film. It's a way to kind of get creative with the reading vlog. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any ideas for these. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you've read any of these books, any of your thoughts on them, or if you're gonna read Five Broken Blades. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them when it comes out. Again, thank you, and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!